When did you first really understand what persecution is? And can you tell me what it means to you? What we need to do is to look at the narratives we are using. I mentioned at the beginning that I believe that the way to understand the individual is to look outside first, look at collective life. Before you and I came into this world, there was already a collective life with its narratives, with its values, with its norms. We came into this world and that collective life will continue after we leave. The narratives that we are using in this age are the narratives of rights and persecution. Of course, not just minorities are going to adopt these narratives. Everybody is impacted by these narratives and very importantly, groups that we sometimes ignore are adopting these narratives. For example, in the United States, I believe that a group that has been ignored are poor white males. And if you look back over the last 20 years, you have this surge, uh, a movement from poor white males adopting the narrative of rights and persecution. And the whole literature on this, uh, books may be becoming bestsellers talking about the persecution of or the neglect, at least, of the poor white male, which is another group that has come in. So we have to have a look at the broad spectrum and realize that once we use these narratives of persecution and violated rights, this is not going to be exclusive to some minorities. This is going to be adopted throughout society. And so we have becoming universal, this rhetoric, this narrative of persecution and rights. Let me give you another uh, way of looking at this. Globalization is bringing with it the pervasiveness of certain social values, social norms that previously were exclusive to particular groups. An example is romantic love. Romantic love is something that is becoming globalized. 40 years ago, when we asked people, would you marry somebody if they had all the qualifications, all the qualities that you want in a marriage partner, but you did not love, love that person, would you marry them? 40 years ago, most men said no, most women said yes. Now, when we ask the same question, the majority of both men and women said no. We have to be in love to marry. Now, this is becoming universal. It's a global phenomenon. It's spread in part through the media, in part through electronic communications. So the idea that I have to be in love in order to marry has become normative. It's become what everybody has to do. Similarly, with rights and persecution, this has become something that is ordinary for people around the world. Something that the narrative is dominant of rights and persecution.